get the mind to settle down, you need to give it a comfortable place to stay. That's why we work with the breath. Or you can say we play with the breath. In other words, we experiment to see what kind of breathing feels good. You can try long breathing or shorter breathing. It's good to start with long breathing to energize the body a little bit. And keep it up until you've decided that long breathing feels tiresome. Then you can let the breath grow shorter, more shallow. But you can also try faster and slower, heavier, lighter. Taste the breath. Decide what, what you'd like to taste right now, what appeals to you. It's important that when you're dealing with the, the breath and trying to make it comfortable like this, that you have to make your frame of reference broad. Otherwise, if you're focused on too narrow a spot and the breath starts getting very refined, you lose your focus. You don't know where you are. So once the breath gets comfortable, try to spread your awareness around and think of the breath spreading through the body as well. When you use the word breath here, it's not just the air coming in and out of the lungs. but It's the flow of energy throughout the body, the energy that flows through the nerves, the blood vessels, through the muscles out to the pores of the skin. And you notice that in some parts of the body it's more obvious than others. Focus on the obvious parts, the parts that are obvious and comfortable. Once you've learned how to maintain that sense of comfort, and it is a skill, Sometimes you get excited, this feels really good, and then you've lost it. So try to have a balanced state of mind as you deal with a sense of ease. Once you've got that sense of ease, think of it spreading around. Think of the breath spreading around as well. Maintain that broad frame of awareness. And if the mind slips off, just drop whatever it is that it slipped after, and you'll be right back at the breath. If it does it again, you bring it back again. Each time you come back, try to reward yourself with a breath that feels especially good. Think of some part of the body that needs a little extra energy and provide that. Think of the breath going there immediately as you breathe in. It might be down in the middle of the brain, in the area of the heart, in the area of the stomach or some of the more outer parts of the body that need to be refreshed. Because the qualities of right concentration are pleasure and refreshment. And you can create those qualities with, by the way you breathe. The question sometimes comes up, here we are working with comfort, but isn't the whole point of the Dharma is to understand suffering? Well, how are you going to understand the subtle ways in which the mind makes itself suffer unless you can create a sense of ease? And with that sense of ease, and the slightest movements of the mind that would add a little bit of extra stress become completely obvious. They're very apparent. Or otherwise, they just get lost in the, in the general dis-ease of the body and the dis-ease of the mind. It's one of the reasons why the Buddha focuses on the breath, this, apparently on the night of his own awakening. This was the topic he was focused on, and as he said, this was one of the topics that he focused on most. And when he describes breath meditation, it's not just being aware of the breath in the present. There was once a time when he recommended breath meditation, and one of the monks said, you yeah, know, I do breath meditation already. And the Buddha said, oh. What kind of breath meditation do you do? And the monk said, well, I put aside all thoughts of the past and all hopes of the future and just equanimous about what's happening in the present moment as I breathe in, breathe out. The Buddha said there is that kind of breath meditation, but it's not the one that gives the best results. And they laid out 16 steps. 
And the important point in all the steps is that as you breathe in and breathe out, you give yourself a task to do, either in making the breath comfortable, giving rise to a sense of refreshment, or in dealing with, with what the Buddha calls fabrication. And this is where breathing meditation connects to the Four Noble Truths. Because the way you fabricate the body is by the way you breathe. The way you fabricate the mind is through your perceptions and feelings. And your feelings are not emotions, they're feeling tones. Sense, a sense of pleasure, a sense of pain, neither pleasure nor pain. That has a huge impact on the mind. That and the perceptions you use to communicate with yourself, the images you hold in mind or the words by which you identify that this is this and that is that. When the Buddha analyzes why we suffer, sometimes he takes the analysis just back to craving, and sometimes he traces it further back down to ignorance. Then as he's tracing it back, one of the things he points out is that if you fabricate your experience, and fabricate here means not you're totally making things up, but you do have a role in shaping things. If you do it in ignorance, you're going to suffer. If you do it with knowledge, it becomes a path. And one of the things you fabricate is the state of your mind. Another is how you sense your body. The way you sense your body is through the breath. The way you fabricate your mind is through creating sense, a sense of ease or a sense of dis-ease, and then slapping some perceptions on it. Sometimes the perceptions come first. You want to see this process clearly. And here's a really good way to see it, as you focus on the breath. Because the way you perceive the breathing is going to have an impact on how you experience the breath. If you think of the breath as just the air coming in and out through the nose, that can be very restricting. It's just a, two little tiny holes there, and it's kind of supposed to energize the whole body. You begin to struggle with the breath. And it may not seem like much of a struggle, but if you've learned how to breathe in a way that you're thinking of the breath energy permeating throughout the body and through every pore. Then when you go back to thinking, well, it's just those two little holes, you see it does place a restriction on the energy flowing through the body. This gives you a test case. You see how perception done in ignorance can lead to stress, and that some perceptions are more useful than others. And you have the choice in how you're going to perceive things. And we exercise this choice throughout the day. When you look at a problem, you can look at it from the point of view of economics, or you can look at it from the point of view of geology, or the point of view of agriculture, or whatever. And there are lots of different frameworks that we can use to look at the problems that we have in our lives. And we pretty much choose the frameworks fairly willy-nilly, and the Buddha wants us to be more deliberate. What's the most useful framework for approaching your breath right now? A set of perceptions that allows the breath to feel easeful and allows a sense of ease to fill the body. Because after all, when the Buddha defines the first noble truth, it's the truth of suffering. It's the five clinging aggregates, and one of those aggregates is perception. And a good way to see how you cling to perceptions is to experiment with new perceptions. and seeing that they're useful. This is why we listen to the Dharma to begin with. The Buddha gives us new ways of perceiving our lives to try on. And he doesn't have a stop there. He says, start experimenting on your own. Because as he said, you can get the breath so subtle that it actually stops. Now this part of the mind that's going to rebel is it doesn't like the idea. As the breath begins to calm down, sometimes it will stop for a bit and then you get scared. But if your mind is something, air is all around, energy is all around. If you need to breathe, if you need the energy, it'll be there. And you think of the energy coming in through every pore, 
in connecting up in all the different parts of the body. What happens is that things settle down, they get more still. And the prime utilizer of oxygen in the body, i.e. the brain, settles down. So your oxygen needs go down, and there's still a sense of fullness and ease in the body. You don't force yourself to stop breathing. It's just that as things settle down, settle down, settle down, the breath gets more and more subtle. And then you find that without even thinking about it, it stops. And you remind yourself, okay, I'm okay. Just having that perception, perception that it's okay changes things. Otherwise you get startled and you leave and spoil your concentration. So the fact that we're dealing with breath connects directly with the way we perceive the present moment. We begin to understand how the way we perceive in ignorance can lead to suffering, how we cling to certain perceptions can lead to suffering. And working with the breath gives us some experience in letting go of some of that clinging and doing it with knowledge, doing it with awareness. So in this way, working with the breath connects with the first and the second noble truth. And of course, the concentration you develop with the breath, that connects with the fourth noble truth. So it all fits together, in theory. What you're doing right now is learning how it fits together in practice, seeing how you can create a sense of well-being right here. And you can, from that sense of well-being, you can observe your mind with a lot more clarity. And you begin to see the way it relates to the breath will often be connected with the way it relates to other issues as well. So you can catch yourself applying a your perception that makes you suffer. And remind yourself, I don't have to suffer from this. I don't have to cling to this. Because our clinging is not just through liking perceptions. Sometimes there are perceptions we don't like. And you'll be cling to them. We take them for granted that this is the way things are. But when you get a sense of how your perceptions are not totally arbitrary, but there is a sense, there is a range of choice of perceptions you can apply to any particular situation. That gives you the freedom to apply some new ones, try out some new ones, so you don't have to suffer so much. The Buddha's main point in teaching about the Four Noble Truths is pointing out that the suffering that weighs down the mind is the suffering we impose on ourselves. It's not the things that people do outside. They may do horrible things, but we don't have to suffer from them. It's when we grab on to certain ideas and certain ways, of, even just certain ways of breathing, we can weigh ourselves down. But the good news of the Four Noble Truths is you don't have to do that. There's a way out, and it starts with a simple process. Get in touch with what's going on in the present moment by being with the breath, and noticing how your mind has an impact on the way you breathe. And as you develop skill around that, you learn a lot of things about the mind, things that are really liberating. So even though it may not seem like much, just breathing in, breathing out. Focusing on the breath in this way has a lot to offer. <laughs>